Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to the another review? This is another paid request. This time for Steven. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topic, reaction, tier list, re review, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for the incident from 1967, which I never heard of. But it's a black and white film. Stars a guy named Tony Musanti and a very young Martin Sheen. A very young Martin Sheen. As these two punks, they're laughing, enjoying, terrorizing people. Like they're a harassed couple laughing. Or they grab a guy, mug him. The guy only has $8. They call him, hey, we'll let you go. Just say please. Oh, pretty please, huh? No, what do you say? Not please, pretty please. Okay, you go. Then they beat the hell out of him, knock him out. Uh, they even had like a conversation. Which do you did more, bitches or broads? I like both. And Martin Sheen seems a bit crazy, while Tony Musante's more of the the leader of this duo. And then you're introduced to a series of characters. Tis I would say the first half of the film. Is introducing these variety of characters, and then the second half of the film, as they all did a subway train in, I believe, it was New York, and during it, these two punks terrorize, harass, fuck with each of these passengers. So the tears you get introduced to, you have Edmund Mann, yes, from Johnny Carson. Publishes Clearing House, that Edmund man who has a wife and a kid, and they're always arguing about money and want to get home to put the kid to bed. You have a young couple, teenagers, where the guy is very aggressive and kind of rapey. <laughs> That's the way I would describe the guy, like be, trying to be forceful with his girlfriend. Uh, you have an out of work alcoholic. You have a guy that you get the idea he's a homosexual. You have Brock Peters, which I've seen in a couple films. Uh, he was one of the, was it Admirals? In some of the Star Trek movies, I think Star Trek 4, I think Star Trek 6. He was the African American, one of the heads of Starfleet. He plays part of a couple, him and Ruby D, who I remember from the original Stephen Teens The Stand as mother, was it Abigail her name? That everyone, the good people go towards we must make our stand. And Brock Pierce is very racist against white people. And then you have these two soldiers, and one of them is Bull Bridges, who was in The Wizard, he was in uh, Side Kits with Chuck Norris. Been a few movies. I mean, he never got as popular as Jeff Bridges, but this is a good, capable actor. Really liked him in this movie. He's a soldier in the army who is with his buddy. Went to his buddy's parents' place to eat. He has a broken arm. He's from Oklahoma. You also have this elderly couple aggressive towards the, the young, especially the guy. Aggressive to the younger generation. So there's a lot of characters being established. And little spurts. And then the second half. Which I, I like the... It was shot in black and white for this. It gave a bit of a atmosphere. In the subway. And then the fact that the the second half of the film. Always just takes place in the subway tra train car. Gives a little bit of a uh, claustrophobic feel to it. Like no matter what they can't get out. And the director tried to keep the things interesting with sometimes you have like different zooms or different angles usage of the camera. I thought the acting by the two punks, Tony Musante and Martin Sheen, were really good. Being assholes and playful and <clears throat> oozing with animosity and ego and thinking nothing could stop them 
by one of the older ladies says, I'll call the cops. Or the guy, maybe the guy. What the guy older I'm trying to remember. I think it was the older lady. It's like Go call the police. Go ahead. Call him. I ain't stopping you. <clears throat> I think that the point of the film, what I gather is that as they're you know, they mess with the drunk there's a drunk guy who's passed out and the alcohol is like, Oh, why don't you leave him alone? What, you know him? Huh? You know him? And they start messing with him. They start messing with the, the gay guy. And Martin Sheen seems like he's going to, hey, you know, th this guy I'm with, he's, uh, he's pretty dangerous. And maybe I could get you help, huh? And maybe when we get out of here, I mess with him. And then, hey, let's b make him dance. And they technically haven't been physical yet. They definitely haven't been punching, kicking anybody yet. It's just, again, verbally harassing and terrorizing this group. I think what the director was going for was how, despite how some people feel a bit angry or animosity or tough, when confronted with a situation, they will cower. They will be spectators. They won't do anything. Maybe they pipe in a word or two, but then at the end of the day, they will be somewhat cowardly and be watchers instead of participants. Just like the, the guy was being so aggressive with his girlfriend. When these guys, especially Tony Masanti, is like, hey, so how's she in the sack, huh? Guy doesn't say anything. Doesn't Guy doesn't try to fight, because there's only two of them. And I think one maybe has a switchblade. No guns. Guy doesn't do anything, doesn't protect his girlfriend. It's like, oh, you ain't tough anymore. That's what I'm saying. You ain't so tough now, are you? Or like the 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 gay guys asked her for help, but Brock Pierce won't do anything. I'm like, yeah, you were talking so tough where you were getting mad at this guy who accidentally dropped one of the coins at the ticket station, and you're saying, oh yeah, I picked it up and blah blah blah, and how awful white people are. He's going on, and then he's even like, no, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna watch. I like this. Like, he's liking these white guys terrorizing other white people. It's a really piece of shit character. So, you know, gets to a point where the guy uses the N word and says, You smell. You have a N word. I'm not going to say the word smell. And Brock Pierce getting mad and pissed. He's like, Do, do something. He's he's trying, not doing anything. And then he sees that Ruby D. You're going to break her arm. So, Brian, I mean, you just say that he did, he backed down because he didn't want his girl, his love, dear arm broken. Which, if, if they're going for the cowardice bit, that kind of defeats what the director was going for. Because that's not really cowardice, it's just you don't want your girl get her arm broken. So, I think it would have been more effective if Brock Pierce thinks he's ready to fight. But then like, he's all talk, and then he's got his fist, but then he doesn't do anything. I think that would have even more cemented the whole idea of the, the cowardice, and you know, you know, people are getting angry and upset, or they talk tough and they're aggressive, but then I mean, when something real happens, they, which Sally is a real life thing. It's a real life thing that you, you would see this happen, and... And yeah, party's like, there's only there's so many of you and there's only two of these guys, but that, again, that's the whole point of it. And really, the only guy that steps up is Bull Bridges, and I really liked his character. These guys sit back, and as they go to each one, they get to the soldier, and they start, especially Tony Misanti, poking at Bull Bridges. It's like, I don't know. How about you stop rocking the bow for a while, huh, fella? Well, I don't think we're better than you. I do think we're a little quieter. As part that he gets grabbed and Bo, even with one arm, grabs the guy's hand and eases off as his intense look on his face. And he's laughing. 
and this is the only guy, and I, I guarantee you this is the purpose. He's the one outsider, because everybody else is from the city. He's from Oklahoma. He's the outsider. And he's the only one not steered. And he's the only one that makes the bad guys pause. Because all the time, Tony Masante, who, again, he did a really good job as well, as just a low-level creep. You see this look on his eyes, like, like he knows this guy's serious. He know. Because you, you see a little bit earlier where, you know what, I, I don't like you. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like you. Because everybody else, he's goofy. He's not being serious. This is the one time he's being serious at a person. D don't say anymore. Then he tries to get tough, and then that's when Bo gets his end. And then when Bo Bridges is laughing, he's, I'm not intimidated by you, pal. And the guy's like... And then he backs away, and... Because... He'll pick on people that he thinks he can get away with. But he's not, he don't stop picking on Bull Bridges. So, to me, that whole bit said a lot. It's like the first time uh, Tony's character, Joe, I think it was Joe, that like gets the first time he pauses and gets the most serious look so far in the movie. So then that's when they mess with Brock Peters, and as a viewer, I would say I'm kind of glad he cries, because he's been such an awful, racist, piece of shit person. The fact he's able to cry in front of everybody and kind of get, you know, embarrassed, kind of fine with, because he's... Although, to be honest, most of these people, if you think about it, are not really that good of people. It's all really spoiler alert. Spoilers. The Joe Titter starts messing with Edmund Man's daughter, and they like all leave her alone. Oh come on! I just want to look at her. I just want to talk to her. Was the doll? And finally, Bo Burgess stands up and goes, "Leave her alone," and all this. I like the way the director filmed this, where Joe looks and then the camera. Pushes the camera down, and to Bo Bridges' face, and goes, "Well, I'll put you down." And I mean, this is like the most badass I've seen Bo Bridges, which is nice to see. It was a nice change. He's usually the type of performances he's like the dad in the Wizard and Sidekicks, and it was nice to see him in this kind of role. And the way the director tries to re to energize the camera work. The like guy pulls up a switchblade as he goes towards, like, the camera almost follows him in this straight, like, nice steady cam. That wasn't a time, but the smooth pan towards Bo. And Bo, in spoilers, beats the shell of that guy one-handed. He gets wounded, but he beats the shell of him with his cast. Nobody's helping. And then goes to Martin Sheen, and now that his buddy's beaten down, now he's a chicken shit, and he knees him in the balls, in the crotch. And then he slumps down, and even his buddy comes, Are you okay? And he goes and goes, Where were you, buddy? And you, tell, you can tell the way he looked at everybody, there's just a level of disgust of Bull Bridges, like, as if he wants to say, you cowardly pieces of shit. I'm an outsider with one arm, and I beat these two guys, and nobody would help. Nobody could help. Even during the fight, a bunch of people could, like, grab one arm, grab the other arm, boom, boom, boom. But no, nobody would do anything. And, again, the director, I don't know if he just hates the city, if he just hates the, the lifestyle of the city... If he lived in the city, he just wanted to give a big old critique on how a lot of people are. And you tell, like, Bo Bridges' face is like... And they do have a, a bit in there where the cops come in, and the first thing they think is it was Brock Peters, the, the black guy. And they go, no, 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 that's the wrong guy. So they do put that in there.
which I mean, idea-wise put in there, but it's like, don't, no, I mean, come on. You may brought Peter such a racist guy, and then now you're almost saying as if he has a reason to be racist by doing that, and then it's just, I don't know. I mean, you made him such a terrible person that you almost like giving him confirmation of why he's that way. I just, I don't know. I, I know I'm alone in this. I don't think you needed that in there. Maybe that is something that would, yes, that is something that would happen from time to time, to be fair. I'm not blind to that, but not every single time either, because there's two sides of it as well. There were piece of shit racist people, always will be, but not everybody is. I don't just. I think it's mainly because of the character Brock Peters played. He was such an awful person. But. Yeah, I like the way Bullbridge like looked at everybody, as he should. Like fuck all you. That's what he should have said. And even then, like when they walk off, like there's the drunk still passed out, and nobody helps them. Which is probably you know what would happen. They just they worry about their own lives, worry about their own ordeals. And I did what the director was going for, and sadly he's right. There are a lot of people that just stand by with a thumb up their ass and to talk the talk, to talk be, be so fucking tough, and then when the shit really occurs, they just go into their shell. And I thought it was well acted. I thought the black and white and the way the, the train was the way it's lit and the way the director tried to do different bits with the camera at certain points <coughs> kept it interesting enough and they said that the two punts I thought their performances maybe wonder what was going to happen next and Bull Bridges like the most badass I've seen Bull Bridges so that was a nice refreshing change to it change of pace I'm, I'm so used to him as being the dad so it was nice to see him as a bit different so Overall, I liked it. I thought this was a pretty decent movie. So, With that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.